In this problem, we're taking an optically active epoxide and reacting it in acid and water. So, in case of an epoxide, under acidic conditions, the nucleophile attacks the more substituted carbon. So the way it works is you protonate the epoxide to activate it. And if you use sulfuric acid to do that, I'm okay with that. But chances are it's really going to be H3O+. And that gives that. And that particular leaving group is so good, it's leaving before, slightly before the nucleophile gets there. You can think of, it's not really a nice um, equilateral triangle. It's really um, more of a, of a bent triangle where the bond between the oxygen and the carbon is much longer here. And the elongated carbon bond goes to the carbon that's most likely or best equipped to take to handle a positive charge. And so that's the more substituted carbon. And that's what attracts this developing delta positive charge is what attracts the weaker nucleophile water to it. So water attacks and that opens up the epoxide. like so, and then followed by a deprotonation, and there you have it. Like so. And during the entire process, we started out chiral, optically active, and it stayed chiral during the entire process, so the product is still optically active. And you can double check to make sure um, the chiral center was inverted properly. One, two, three. That's an S chiral center. One, two, three. That's an R chiral center, so it was. The other way you could have drawn this product would have been this. And these two molecules are the same molecule. But here, it's more obvious that the chiral center was inverted. It was a wedge. It became a dash.